All right, so in this lesson, we're going to do a little bit of a practice here with finding a seg fault and just using some of our tools, again with Valgrin here. So what I've created here is a program with seg and just some reminders about how we'll run it, how we'll debug it with Valgrin, and how we can debug it with GDB. Now, the purpose of this exercise is to go ahead and create a segmentation fault, which can be as useful as an exercise because then you'll just validate your knowledge of what causes a segmentation fault by intentionally creating one. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to go ahead and do it in a function called foo, just so we have something a little bit more interesting to trace through our program. So uh, in fact, I'm going to create two functions here, foo and bar. And the foo function is just going to call bar. And this is where we'll actually create our segmentation fault. So I'm just adding some things to our call stack to make it a little bit easier. And again, the easiest way to create a segmentation fault is to access memory, which we have not allocated. So for instance, if P is a pointer and it doesn't point to anything, and I try to change the value of P here, then it will uh, cause a segmentation fault. So we should expect a fault here. Okay, and then the specific fault or error is going to be the seg fault. Okay, so I'll just annotate that here. And then in our main program, we'll want to go ahead and call our function foo, which we'll call bar and so on. Okay, so here's our whole program. Let me go ahead and make this just a little bit smaller now that you can see it, just so you can see everything all on the screen at once. And let's go ahead and compile this. Okay, so remember, we're always going to get in the habit of compiling with dash G for our programs these days, um, as long as we're not releasing to the public. And let's see what's going on here. Implicit declaration of the function bar here. Well, we've got to declare these in order. Um, so that's a, a good warning there for us. Looks like GCC was smart enough to figure out um, how to rearrange these functions for us. But let's go ahead and run it now so it looks good. Okay, so now if I run my program, let's just verify that it's going to crash and give us a segmentation fault. Okay, so at this point, we don't know what the problem is. And now what I want to sort of iterate to you is which tool should I use? Because again, we've learned some different tools and we have a few different ways we can find the segmentation fault, right? We can sort of do the delta debugging, put in printfs and so on and try to find the error. But the really right tool for this might be to hop into GDB and again, interactively explore this. See if we can figure out where exactly uh, the segmentation fault occurred. Uh, now, of course, we do have a core dump as well. So we could look at the core dump uh, if those are being output on your operating systems, and then you can um, investigate the memory there. But let's go ahead and just run this through GDB. So again, I put a little note here to run with prog, and then we can use the command line argument just so it hops right into that TUI mode. Um, in my experience, some folks have had trouble hitting control X1 to change the user interface. So again, dash dash TUI will bring us into this source view here. Okay, uh, so once we do this, well, let's just start the program. And I'm just going to run it at this point, okay? Um, we'll start from the beginning. Um, and here it tells us exactly where the segmentation fault is um, as we would expect it. Okay, so we've retrieved the signal. Again, if this is a larger program, we might wanna do some things like figure out where we came from or how we got there. So we can look at our call uh, stack here by typing in backtrace. So we went from main to the foo function to the bar, which is exactly how we coded things up, okay? Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, fix this error here and make sure that everything is fine. Okay, So let's go ahead and allocate uh, some memory here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to do something simple. I'm just going to uh, malloc here uh, one integer here. So size of an int and um, that'll be it. So I've dynamically allocated one uh, integer here, and then now we can dereference it. Okay, so let's recompile this, rerun it. Uh, looks good, no segmentation fault. Uh, I can run it with GDB again. So let me go ahead and start this. And I'm just going to type in uh, S to step into this function, S to step in again, uh, next to move one line at a time here, and no segmentation fault. Okay, so let's just do continue or C for short. Practice those and you know X did normally. Okay, uh, so I can quit GDB and most of the times we're happy we 
end the day with that. But again, we know that bugs can manifest in many different ways. And we've learned some different tools to make sure that our program is super secure. So of course, um, I'm going to talk about Valgrin here, which is to say, well, we've allocated some memory, but is it all free? Could we have a memory leak? Could, while this program is running, assume this program is a long running program, take lots of system resources such that we would eventually run out. And that's the real issue with memory uh, leaks when we allocate without free. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this program with Valgren. So I'll just run it with uh, prog following these uh, instructions here. And it is going to tell us, um, if I look through this, uh, the heap summary is usually what I care about when I'm first looking, um, or the leak summary at the bottom that says we definitely lost four bytes in this program. Okay, so um, it can be a little bit cryptic again to beginners. So let's just make this a little bit bigger, just so we can see everything on uh, one line here. Um, but it's giving us whatever the process was that was running here, 29164 here. And it's telling us, well, yes, we definitely lost some memory here for this process. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and just follow the directions that it gives us with this tool. And this is something I've also seen uh, folks struggle with. Um, and, you know, just where to type these command arguments. Okay. So we're running this with Valgrind and then running our program um, at the end here. Okay. So let's go ahead and run this. I'll clear the screen and we'll see that this time we get some more information. And it'll actually tell us in the heap summary that in use at exit, so when we terminate the program, there were four bytes in uh, one block. So one memory allocation has caused this four byte uh, leak here. And again, if we compile with the debug information, we can usually get a, get a good idea of where that happened using Valgren. It'll, it'll give us again the stack here. Um, so how we got to this function, because there might've been different ways that we called into this function, but you know, in our program, there's only one way to get to the, the bar function through foo. Um, so this is helpful. This is why it gives us the whole stack. So again, in less trivial programs, this will be useful information here. Um, but then it'll tell us here where the four bytes were lost. And it was through the malloc function, you know, in case there's some other, um, you know, memory allocation function that a user wrote, there are ways to do that and, and check in Valgren, but most of the time it's going to be malloc if we're in C. Uh, for instance. Okay, so we can go ahead and fix this bug by freeing our memory here once we're done with it. Okay, so let's just free P. Let's recompile this and rerun it. Uh, we're just going to rerun it with Valgren. I'll run it with a full leak check. And this is what we want to see that all heap blocks were free, no leaks are possible. Okay, it gives us the summary. It told us that, hey, throughout the duration of your program, you allocated one item and you did indeed free it. Uh, so for every allocation, you did one free, um, or at least all of your four bytes that were allocated were in fact freed here. Okay, um, so that's sort of the, the crash course. And I wanna just tell you, you know, some other tools here while we're here just to push this exercise a little bit further, um, because it's not always gonna be as trivial as using integers, right? Maybe you have a structure. Uh, I'm just gonna call this data here. Um, let's just go ahead and um, do something here. So this is just some block of bytes here. Um, so there's going to be A here, uh, and tier, and let's just do another um, double here. Okay. Um, so, you know, we've got this structure and let's just allocate something, you know, a little bit more interesting here. Um, actually, let's just go ahead and allocate something here. Uh, our data T, it's going to be a pointer. Uh, and I'm just going to call this, um, you know, allocation. And we're going to malloc the size of our data T and resume from here. Okay. Um, so let me go ahead and move this structure up just so we declare it in the right. Um, it has to be uh, or declared here. So I'll just create it and allocate there. And, and let's just go ahead and run this program again uh, by recompiling it. Um, oh, let's see, one little error here with a semicolon at the end. So I'll insert it there and recompile. I'll give you folks just a moment to look at it here. So here's the full source program on the left side, uh, all fitting on one screen nicely there. And again, I run this program, no errors, no problems. And if I run it in Valgrin, uh, now we'll see that there is a 16 byte allocation somewhere. Okay. And let's just make things a little bit more confusing here. Okay, so let me go ahead and 
let's see, integers are usually four bytes here. Um, so if I multiply this by four, then I will have a, another 16 byte uh, structure here. So let me go ahead and do this. And anyway, what I'm trying to show is that, well, we have 32 bytes allocated. There's two allocations, there's one free. And maybe I'm trying to decide, you know, if I'm just eyeballing this program, what is the possible structure that could have caused this 16 bytes? Was it here or was it here? Now, obviously I can see the free here. Sometimes it's not always as trivial, uh, but I just wanna show you that, you know, you have other tools that you can use. So whether it is in fact just doing something, you know, if you need to do a quick um, debug here, you could print the uh, size of a structure here. Okay, so size of data T, and let's just do um, percent LU, and then do the size of that actual data T structure, okay? Um, and then I'll, I'll again show you what I'm getting at here, um, just for your, your tools. Okay, so you can see that that is 16, okay? Because, you know, it's a little bit confusing, you know, how big's a double? Is it eight bytes? Is this four bytes? Um, typically this is one, but I guess this structure got padded, so it's another four bytes here, so four, four, and eight, 16. Uh, bytes here. So I can use sometimes the size up to give you a hint and say, okay, what is it? If I'm looking at this structure here, maybe this is what didn't get free just by knowing the size of the structure. So that's just what I wanted to show you as another uh, helpful tool here. Now, of course, we're learning GDB as well. So uh, these printf things, let's see if we can do a little bit better here. So let's go ahead and launch this into GDB. I'm going to do it with the TUI mode because I like doing that. Let's start our program. And we have this symbol here loaded up here. So let's just go ahead and print the size of, well, data T here. And that is in fact 16. So that's the other way we can do it, right? We don't have to hard code these here. Again, you know, sometimes it's useful to have these or or sometimes you might want to write an assert statement to assert that this data type on this particular architecture with whatever compiler optimizations you're running is in fact 16, so you can check it at runtime this way, but sometimes you can also do the quick check in GDB by just printing off the size of the data structure, okay? So those are your tools. Again, sometimes it's helpful uh, to sort of combine GDB if you're checking the size of the structures with Valgrin while you're debugging and, and, and just you know understand that you don't have to use both tools in isolation, right? GDB is a great tool, Valgrin is a great tool, so you both uh, use all the tools that you learn through these lessons um, together and you know I hope this is just another fun example of debugging that segmentation fault and finding it and of course um, before I close off the lesson I can't leave folks without doing this I have to free the allocation and run it <laughs> just one more time to make sure that uh, we in fact leave you with a program that frees all the blocks of memory no segmentation faults, no memory leaks, and this is good. Okay, so signing off here, folks. Hope you enjoyed that one uh, for using GDB and Valgrind together and just some little tools.